Today we're starting um, Mystica Essentials Day 3. And uh, first of all, thank you very much for joining me in these sessions. Uh, uh, they, these, this has been a very uh, cool experience and I'm really enjoying it a lot. I hope it's the same case with you, but I see loads of people repeating in these live sessions, which is great. You know that you're going to have these uh, available on SGO and ICA uh, channels and websites um, later during the week. Um, but it's still really cool to have you here live because if you have any uh, questions, I might be able to answer them. W uh, just a reminder that uh, please uh, join the Mystica 10 global community uh, Slack group. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, go there and uh, just like Marcel had a question now, uh, make that question in the, in the group. There's uh, a very uh, uh, wide uh, number of, of uh, Mystica uh, ninjas there that can help you with, with uh, any questions that you might have. Okay, and again, there's no new media, uh, but uh, for those that maybe are seeing their first session, remember that uh, during the whole um, Essentials class, we are building a whole online process and uh, there's media to follow through the classes to learn how to uh, do all these things in Mystica. Okay, um, you will find in the documentation folder of uh, the link there, the new PDF for today's session. So what are we gonna do today? Well, uh, we're going to do a whole online conform session. We're going to conform an XML and we're going to learn to relink the media. Uh, it's, uh, uh, I'm trying to kill two birds with one stone here and show you uh, actually how to uh, conform an XML and at the same time, uh, relink anything uh, in, in the future. So you could also learn to relink. We're going to import a reference small file and we're going to start doing a conform check. Mystica in this case is uh, a bit trickier than maybe other softwares and doesn't have a conform check tool uh, per se, a, a built one, but we're gonna build our own. And in the process, we will learn how uh, the Mystica node effects uh, work. We will see if the resizes have imported uh, correctly into our project. We will fine tune the time warps uh, that are in the XML. We will check in fade ins and fade outs. And in the process, we will create conform presets accessible from every single project. Um, we're going to learn uh, the effects nodes, uh, wipes, nonlinear mix, comfortities, and channels. Those are most of the uh, um, uh, nodes that we are going to be working on um, today. We are going to build uh, dummy clips in the process and multiple layer groups, okay, which is going to make this interesting, not only for as uh, conform tools, but in the future as, as you start building your own effects and your own uh, color grading uh, nodes and, and stuff like that. Um, we're going to stabilize the shots in the COM3D import a new EDL to import uh, graphics, work with alpha channels, learn to manipulate the alpha, comp graphics over our images, work uh, the transparency and add a shadow. Then we will quickly denoise shots with Mystica's built-in denoise effect and uh, with the DVO plugins clarity. And finally, we will learn how to uh, cache, uh, cache, 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 our clips to have real time playback and obviously have uh, the ability to uh, work in real time with uh, clips that have had a heavy uh, denoise effect on applied. Okay, so um, that's what I'm going to do for a second. Okay. And now Let's go back. So first thing, um, 
I'm, I'm, we're going to go to the Mystica config tool. Uh, firstly, to double check that we are using the preset that we created the first day, okay, which is the ICA Mystica Essential one, okay. But just remember, this is based on the factory preset of 1920 by 1080, uh, but it, it is set at uh, 25 frames uh, per second, okay. Um, if we go to uh, file paths, uh, one second. Please uh, take care of um, changing the playback cache directory because, uh, for example, here in this case, I'm using a, a very fast SSD M2 drive that I have in my computer, okay, which actually you can see it's labeled already with a cache uh, uh, name. Uh, precisely to cache uh, anything that I want to for real-time playback. Please uh, also choose the fastest drive that you have in your system to perform this operation. By default, Mystica does it in the system uh, drive and uh, um, you might not want to do that, okay? So um, I'm just gonna hit cancel there because I already have it configured and this is, especially important for the very end of uh, the project of today's class. Okay, so we're gonna press okay. And we're going to launch Mr. Boutique. So, Okay, I'm going to go to our ACA Mystic Essentials uh, project. Okay, and we have here uh, the timeline that we worked on uh, last week. I'm not gonna need it uh, for now, but uh, maybe some of you guys have uh, been uh, doing some color grade work on it, uh, whatever. Uh, so uh, you, you still wanna have it. For the purpose of today's class, we are not going to uh, use it. So I'm just going to hit on new timeline. I think I didn't really show that in previous classes, how to open a new timeline in Mystica. It's as easy as right clicking over the timeline and hitting new timeline. In the media folder, uh, you do have uh, kind of a file with a plus uh, uh, sign on. You have, uh, that's uh, the icon. And as soon as you click there, uh, Mystica uh, opens a new timeline for you, okay? Um, please navigate to where uh, we have uh, the media I've sent you for the classes, uh, the ICI Mystica Essentials, because over there, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go to the documentation folder. And over here, I've got EDL, PDF, and XML. Uh, and we're going to use the XML for today's session. And in the X, uh, XML, we're going to use the nut seed milk uh, recipe. Uh, I, I really want to thank uh, my friend that uh, allowed me to use these videos for these classes. And actually check it out once you finish. Uh, there are quite good uh, vegan recipes of this. So uh, to learn to conform an XML, uh, well, it's just as easy as double clicking and uh, the conform XML menu will pop up. Um, in this case, um, I'm going to start the conform at uh, zero. One thing uh, to take uh, uh, care of here is I've double clicked now, but you can also drag and drop it. When you drag and drop it, Mystica will kind of think that uh, you uh, really want to conform the files to where you drop them in the timeline. And that's why it says they're 1909 uh, uh, right now. But uh, uh, you could also ask uh, Mystica to get this from uh, uh, the list from the XML file and it will automatically go to uh, whatever it was defined on the XML. You could choose here if you want uh, the effects in the XML uh, to be included to flatten the XML effects. If you want to import all the video tracks, uh, videos one, two, and three. And uh, you could also um, uh, obviously here choose to search for the media after the timeline import. Normally we would do this and we've uh, already um, 
uh, linked the media, but I really want to take advantage of, uh, of the classes and to show you as many things as possible in one go. So I'm going to say do not link the, cl the clips to media over here. And, and this is going to uh, come from a timeline with no linked media, but I'm going to be able to ask Mr. Go to uh, fetch the files that uh, we need from the storage. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, hit next. And obviously here, it's going to ask me to give it a name and I'm going to say XML timeline. Okay, just to define it and just in case, zero one. Okay, so now you can see when when there's something offline in Mystica, you see this uh, kind of uh, checkered box, checkered uh, flag here. Okay, and this is a sign that uh, the media is offline in Mystica. Um, to solve this, what we're going to do is actually um, just uh, select the clip, go to media. And in this icon, uh, and over here, you are going to find a small icon of a uh, chain, obviously of two chains uh, that are linked together. And you're just going to hit it, and it's going to open the relink um, uh, uh, window. And here, uh, the easiest thing to do, obviously, in this project is uh, we just have to go to oh, um, so one thing is it's going it's telling you the location obviously the location that was defined in the xml document and where the new location is um one uh, uh funny thing of this as well uh, well if you go to the attributes uh it's going to say that uh, media is not linked there so obviously uh there's enough information out there pointing you to, uh, well, telling you that uh, the media is not linked. So again, going back to um, my media manager. And over here, uh, I know that this is in uh, original camera negatives, in ARIA, uh, video, in day one, uh, chocolate, C05, okay? And you can see here that automatically it, it's popping up in my um, source monitor as well. That um, a path uh, uh, name is already now on the, on the second um, uh, field in my window. And then over here, right now I could say all clips or only clips without media. This is when you only have a few clips that uh, do not have media. Uh, and, and in this case, it doesn't really matter because um, uh, all of them are um, unlinked. So I'm just going to press uh, perform. And Mr. Go is obviously um, telling you that there's 35 clips that cannot find the media. Do you want to try relinking them by replacing one line with another? And you can say, okay. And all clips in the current timeline were successfully relinked. You should now save the timeline under new name uh, using save as option to keep the changes. Well, um, you don't need to save them as a new name. You just can hit save and it will be saved. But obviously you could also use save as if you wanted to. So, um, in the record monitor, I need to remember that I so you so you guys can see what I'm seeing here. Uh, I need to activate deactivate the live video output in uh, my system, and we can see here that we have our clips imported. Okay, and this actually there's some shops that. Uh, 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 going to need a little bit more care. So what are we going to do for this? Obviously, we're going to check this with uh, an MP4 uh, file that uh, you also have. We've already imported this. We're going to go to media. Let's hit uh, house. And this is going to go to the data folder of our project. 
And over here, it's going to be exactly in reference H264. And uh, there we have it, okay? I'm just gonna drag and drop it into uh, the timeline and there it is, okay? We have a new uh, clip in there. And I'm just going to position this on zero. Uh, to do this, I, I could have uh, actually what I was about uh, going about to do is select my first clip and um, select those two and press over here align, and that would have aligned them. But the other thing that I can do is obviously use the calculator select uh, to use anything that I have selected in my timeline to be the agent where I'm going to apply uh, the action and just uh, hit set position and it will uh, go to the exact time code that I've, in this case, I haven't typed in. It's, uh, that's been like really easy, okay? Now, uh, this is a clip with uh, sound, I do, uh, don't, not going to bother too much with the sound right now. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, break this and maybe leave it uh, down at the bottom here to maybe use it at some other, in some other moment. The other thing that I can do here, what I'm going to do, uh, this is just kind of like a safe uh, measure. It's actually, I'm going to clone uh, this conform, okay? And as soon as I uh, hit uh, um, click, uh, with Alt button pressed and I press with the left uh, button of the mouse, it will automatically clone the shots. And you can see now these shots are overlapping over each other. And that's why it's flagged as a red. And we can move this down. And the reason I'm doing this is just, uh, just to be safe. I'm going to group them over here into one single group and uh, hide them uh, and hide them there for a second. Uh, gonna lock them so nothing uh, changes here and then hide it. Just in case I need to come back uh, to recover anything if I uh, need to or consider it necessary. I'm not saving it in another timeline. I have it in my timeline just protected under a group and uh, also hidden so it's not really bothering me okay so it's just there if i need to but um, i don't have to do no uh, nothing else just because i've locked it now i can't move it see i'm trying to move it and you can see here in the attributes that it's not only locked but it's also hidden okay if you press h again it will be uh, unhidden h uh, works as a as a toggle, okay? And the lock works as a toggle as well, L, okay? And in this case, uh, we will hide it and lock it so it can't be moved and we can't see it. But just in case, I leave it there just to be safe. So. We have some questions, maybe, if you wanna, if you wanna answer them before okay. you move on. Uh, yeah. So Zoe wanted to know what was the shortcut to clone uh, this that you used before? Okay, so the shortcut to clone, just select the clip, press the Alt button, and just click on it, and that will clone it, okay? Then there's another thing. Over here, you have the, the button uh, clone here. Uh, if you uh, select a clip and press clone, it will be cloned there as well. There's another interesting thing here as well, is that if I type in here a number, 25, Okay, well, maybe 25 is a bit too dangerous. Let's just say five, okay? I select that, uh, the my reference clip on top and press clone. Mystic is gonna say, you're about to clone this five times. Do you really wanna do this? And I say, okay, yeah. And actually I'm gonna do a bounding box here to select them. And then I'm going to press pack to the left and Mystic will just uh, put them one after the other in the timeline, okay? Uh, for this case, might not be useful, but maybe when we're working with graphics that we're going to be using in many different edits that are in our same timeline, that might be really helpful, okay? So um, uh, maybe uh, have it in mind uh, in the future, okay?
That's a cool trick. Uh, yeah. So also Jeff was asking when aligning, how does Mystica know which clip to align to which? In other words, which clip stays put and which clip moves? That's a great question. So let's misalign this for a second. So if I, uh, uh, basically the rule is uh, very simple. I'm selecting one clip and I'm selecting here. Uh, let's not select the first one. So uh, let's make this like really obvious. Let's select the third one, okay? And over here, uh, Mystic is going to align it to the endpoint uh, that is further to wherever you choose, okay? So it's going to, when you say align to the left, it's gonna choose um, the, the endpoint that is most to the left in the timeline, okay? So for example, uh, there right now, I just aligned it to that endpoint. I'm going to undo this for a second, and now I'm going to hit uh, align to the right. So what it's going to do, it's going to align it to the furthest point to the right. So actually now it will move uh, the shot number three to the very end of uh, the reference clip uh, over there because it was the, uh, imp the point in our timeline that was further to the right. Okay, so that's how it would do it. Awesome. Okay, you can, hey. you can, you can carry on now. <laughs> Right. Oh, I deleted my reference. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Now, so uh, what I'm going to do is just um, over here, uh, just set position. Oh, I don't have the calculator activated. Set position, and it's on zero here. Okay. So uh, as I said in the introduction in the presentation, Mystica does not have a bespoke tool for a conform check. So we're going to have to use uh, the Mystica FX tool to, to do this. Um, and generally, I normally work with uh, one specific uh, tool, which is uh, the wipes. So normally, uh, the wipes are the ones I use most, but we're going to learn how to do several different ones in today's session. So uh, thing I do is I press, uh, I select uh, my reference clip here press wipe and select. Normally I, I choose this one here, which is a wipe with um, cones. And actually I'm going to show this on its own first. Okay, so here in an empty part of my timeline, I'm going to press wipe, uh, wipe again and choose it because uh, wipe effects in Mystica when they are not uh, when they have no input uh, configured in, um, in it, no input uh, in the node effect here. So if I go here for node graph for a second, not that one. Okay, this just left me really bad there right now for a second. <laughs> okay, when it doesn't have any inputs, it could work as a generator as well. And in this case, obviously it's generating uh, black and white uh, wipe of uh, going from uh, A to B. Uh, uh, A is uh, the white, I think A is um, uh, the B uh, clip and uh, black is uh, the uh, A clip. So over here, I'm going to actually remove the animation there, 50, and actually I reduce the strip here. Normally I reduce it to 10 or 13. Whoa, sorry. I just I reduce this to 13, okay? And normally that's how, how I leave uh, this. Actually, now if I copy it, I'm gonna get rid of this one and place it here, I select it, okay? Here now, the difference for the wipe uh, stripe effect here right now is that now it's gonna have two inputs. Okay, so now if I do go to the node graph here, and over here we're seeing obviously the fade up. Mm, 
we can see the white stripe now is having their two inputs, one and two. Okay, so so uh, that is it. If we see this in our eval tree here, we can see that the white stripe has a uh, uh, legend there, uh, well, text uh, telling this is the wipe in and this is the wipe out. Okay, but as we have right now, as uh, we've defined before, there is no animation right now, so we are seeing the whole um, um, edit to basically do the conform check and just to be sure that uh, everything is uh, correct. One thing that I'm going to do here, and it, this is for navigation purposes, and because uh, we're going to use more uh, effects to conform check uh, our, our uh, edit, I'm going to go to the macros over here and press split conform, OK? What this is going to do is propagate the cuts of the edit to the clips that are on top or above. It doesn't really matter, OK? Um, but it's going to cut uh, the reference clip and the wipe stripe. The reason I'm going to do this, you're going to see it uh, later, is because for navigation uh, purposes, uh, it's going to improve the navigation. And also, we could be very specific in some part. If we don't want to use the wipe stripe and use something else, we could easily replace it. And actually, I'm going to press split conform. And there you go. Mr. Good just propagated the cuts here. And now let's uh, start looking at our medium, at our edit. We can see here in our edit that um, uh, the clip with this kind of um, light green, remember that these are time warps, okay? And this is uh, uh, something that uh, uh, we will obviously uh, work on right now. Uh, but the difference between this light greens and the other clips is that the other green, uh, dark green clips have not have their um, their, uh, their speed modified, but the other ones have, okay? And you can see here that uh, the speed it's been modified to has been 125%. Uh, so I'm gonna double click on the wipe stripe here and just uh, double check here. And actually I, what I could do is even uh, play this if I wanted to here. And we could say that that's been conformed uh, correctly. One thing that did not come up correctly in the, in the XML is the fades here. We could see that Mystica is reading these. Uh, I'm going to take this as kind of uh, a mix with the next shot. But in the edit, we could see here, if I double click in, in the edit alone, we could see that actually it's uh, fading out and then it's fading in. How I'm going to uh, change this? Well, actually quite quickly here, I'm gonna go to my mix here and press fade down. I'm just gonna put it on top, get rid of the previous one and uh, just place it over the clip here and over here, mix, fade up and do exactly uh, the same, okay? I'm checking the chat and see if there's any more questions. Um, can I create macros myself? No, not yet. Um, nope, not in the software at least. Uh, but I don't know if you could use uh, maybe a stream deck or something. That is something that I, I would actually love to play with. And does it matter whether you have any clips selected before you press split conform? No, it doesn't matter whether you have any clips selected before you press split conform. It will actually just propagate uh, the clips. The best way to protect any clip that you don't want uh, to be uh, split or cut in this case is to um, uh, lock them, okay? And that will lock the position and obviously uh, lock uh, the, the clip as well and it won't be cut, okay? So um, we've changed the fade, up, the fade downs and the fade ups. And now if we compare it in the wipes uh, here, the wipe stripe here for a second, we could see that now it uh, matches a lot uh, better. Okay, now let's go to uh, the next clip. And here in the next clip, whoa, 
okay, something definitely isn't working here. What is going on? Well, what is going on is that obviously uh, over here, some shots uh, are um, um, obviously uh, resized in, in our edit here. So uh, we obviously have to ad or adjust them or uh, find the right way because they're also mirrored. And in this case, this shot, I believe it's uh, mirrored as well. So if I just double click here on the shot here, we can see that actually it's zoomed in to part of the image that isn't um, actually, it's not uh, helpful. And if we see the reference here, full screen, we could see that obviously there we're not following the action that we need to. Um, then obviously what we can do is obviously we are seeing here the attributes of uh, the clip and we could see there's also an animation that's been imported and we could see that uh, perfectly moves uh, inside the frame. And also we have different options of the result size of, of our clips and everything. And uh, here the fit width or whatever this will impact and um, and maybe sometimes you would have to choose uh, something else uh, that we'll think if we're going one to one here. Um, we see that obviously that is not the option that uh, we need if we go pad to fit or crop to fit exactly exactly the same because the source uh, footage is at the, the same aspect ratio. So uh, let's see if it's uh, the mirror here that we need to correct. Let's see it with a white stripe. And now the white stripe uh, says that it's not the horizontal mirror. It's not a vertical mirror. Oh, but this one is a lot closer. Okay, so we did a full 180 degrees rotation, but we can see it's not perfectly matched. So, and maybe this white stripe is not helpful for this operation that we want to do. Um, we are going to do a difference um, uh, um, Boolean here to uh, see this a lot better. So I'm going to get rid of the white stripe. And over here, I'm going to apply a channels effect. And in this channels effect, I'm just going to double click, open my red, green, and blue channels. And the operation that I'm going to choose is uh, difference difference and difference. Okay, and now here with uh, my difference uh, effect, now I have two options. I could uh, offset the clips inside uh, the attributes over here, or I could use these uh, this panel over here and move this by pixel. So if I wanted to move this a, a very specific pixel, I could do it uh, as well. Okay, so uh, you could actually choose how uh, precise you want to be if you want to use uh, this in, in pixels or if you want to uh, use this in percentages. Okay, so one thing that we're going to do that I haven't done with the previous one here in this white stripe is actually I'm going to change the name of the white stripe effect here and I'm going to call it conform check, check uh, underscore wipe Let's say columns and I'm going to save this actually as a preset so I'm going to go to my presets here and for a second Uh, we could, uh, if you remember uh, correctly, uh, last week we saved uh, presets of our grades here. And now I'm going to go here into my global presets here for a second. And just going to double click. And this is empty right now. And I'm going to set the destination folder of this preset. Uh, just double uh, going to click here in set destination, and it's going to be in the, uh, th this as the global presets. Um, what we're going to do here is actually going to save this preset for any conforms that we're going to do in the future. So I'm going to uh, press uh, create, 
and actually just say conform deck uh, wipe and a C for uh, columns. Okay, so that is easy. And over there, we could see it, it saved a preset of that. And in this next one, where I did channels, I'm actually going to do something similar. Conform check difference. So this is uh, conform check difference. And now I'm going to save it here as well. Okay, just click and say difference. And now I don't have to build them. I already have uh, these uh, two uh, types of uh, conform checked uh, uh, already uh, created. And then the only thing I have to do is next time I come up with a uh, shot that uh, might be uh, critical, let's see this other new top shot here as well. Okay, over here, what I'm going to do is actually get rid of this one. Just double click here and say, okay, difference. And then just be sure that I apply that here. And then with my presets, just be sure that I apply the correct rotation. And over here, this one is slightly out. And just with offset here, I'm just moving it into position and seeing it really well with my uh, difference uh, conform check option here, okay? So this is one way of uh, doing this. Okay, now, um, next shot that we are looking here, okay? We can see that this is okay. Yeah, I, I think it is a time warp, but uh, I think it actually looks all right. So let's go to the next shot. Okay, and again, same thing here than uh, before. Let's quickly, before I do anything, let's put rotate 180 degrees. And over here, this one did come across uh, correctly. So this one is correct, okay? So that is uh, good to know. Let's check this. Uh, the white stripe here, okay. And this one we could see this is a, a time warp effect and this one looks like it's a bit off, okay. So how are we going to change this here? Um, so obviously one click in the eval tree to select uh, the time warp effect. If I uh, select here my time time frame and I see it in my keyframe graph, I could see obviously here that there is an, uh, the animation there of what is going on. Sometimes it might just be a, a frame off. And over here in Mystica, there is an option here, uh, you can see here uh, that says uh, shift. And this shift operation is exactly the same as the one that we have in the timeline here, that is shift. And what it does, it's actually easier to see in the visual editor here for a second. It will shift one shot. If we wanted to, oh, I have to select uh, the clip. It will shift one frame, that clip. And over there, we could see that it, it, moved, it was just out for a frame, but oh, what's going on there? Yeah. Oh, it's changing again. Okay, so maybe there is another uh, difference here. We have different options in the in our time warps, and especially in the time warps that we have, we have uh, different modes. You have uh, nearest mode, uh, blend, and you can see here it bl it's blending frames, and this is not uh, what exactly what we want for this. We could use a motion estimation uh, time warp here with a warp, and then these vectors and slopes are just um, uh, visual information that, uh, that we could see uh, later on. Um, in this uh, case, we could use um, nearest or warp, and those were are going to give us uh, the best results. But we we saw here that uh, actually moving it a frame corrected only there for the the frame that we were. But what if we want to adjust this individually per frame? Well, what we could do is I can select the time 
uh, time parameter here. And I could maybe put the, uh, activate the order key. And with Alt pressed, you're gonna see here that I'm gonna go decimal by decimal here, okay? And Mystica has applied a keyframe in that point. Okay, so now I can easily move and adjust the time warp effect as needed wherever I need to do it, okay? I think that I'm realizing here is that there is a fade here just exactly as we had in the past. Let's do this quickly. Add, whoops, no, it's a mix. Uh, whoops, not fade up. It was, it's a fade down, but I don't need to call it again just by pressing R, it will reverse it, okay? And convert it into a fade down. And in this case, uh, this is a fade up. I'm gonna remove this one and put it on top. Okay, and same thing here, fade down and uh, fade up. Get rid of these two and apply them. Let's now double check any others that we might have because it's going to be exactly the same. Mister going to press them as mixes and they're not. So we just add a fade down mix here and a fade up get rid of the old ones, just add them here. And then the final one where we have another one and this one is just a fade down. Gonna get rid of this. And here we could see that the edit was slightly longer. Here, I ju I'm just uh, peaky and being a bit more, uh, well, I really like them um, to match completely. So normally what I do here is I select anything that uh, obviously is remnant, I think it's remnant to the right word. Uh, just apply a solid and put it at the bottom there. So, so actually there is um, a one-to-one, -one, um, obviously uh, uh, they match completely, one-to-one. -one. Okay, so I believe we just did uh, this shot over here. And we can go to this other shot. Uh, no, that one is correct. Let's go to the next shot. Yeah, we've done this one. This one looks right. And maybe if we're jumping from shot to shot, this is a solid we don't want to see this uh, uh, wipe. We want to see a picture in picture. So let's just build a picture in picture quickly, okay? So what I'm gonna do here is actually apply a comp 3 effect. Go to the effects and add a comp 3 which I slightly forgot where it is right now. And I'm finding my way. Yeah, I found it. Sorry. When, I, when you learn the hotkey, you stop using it. Okay, so over here, when I double click here, uh, with the Comfort3D, we could see that the Comfort3D is seeing layer one and layer two. And I only have one layer here. So uh, come to the layer tab and add uh, the second layer just to be completely uh, sure. And right now, as this is a 3D comp, we are just seeing the um, the layer two, which is comped on top of uh, layer one, okay? But to change that, I'm going to change the set position just by a decimal. Remember here with Alt, you can move the decimals of the parameters. If you uh, don't use Alt, okay, let me reset this. It will go, uh, by a single number uh, every time you drag and drop. If you press shift, it will go uh, 10 by 10. If you press control, 100 by 100. If you press shift alt, it's, that is a hundredth, right? Or uh, no, a thousandth. And control shift, there you go, uh, just uh, the second decimal there. It's uh, the one that um, 
will change things, okay? Anyway, here, just to uh, bring it forward, 0 0.1, my layer one. And then here, what I'm going to do is, without the keyframe graph, uh, just size, change it to uh, 50 cent of this, and just put it there at the bottom, so I'm seeing it. And over here now, I have a picture and picture option uh, to do my conform check. And uh, if I see this in my record monitor, that's how I would see it. And now just to do the same thing as we did with the previous ones, conform check, a PIP, picture and picture. And I'm also going to save a preset of this. So now we have it for anything that we want in the future. Okay, so there we go. Conform checked uh, picture in picture. And that's one option as well. Okay, so we see this here. Now, uh, next wipe stripe here. And we see here that there's a slight uh, yeah, difference there in our time warp again. So what we're going to do here, uh, maybe I want, I'd rather prefer to use instead of a wipe stripe, which I do find helpful, maybe we want to use a nonlinear mix to do this, okay? And in this nonlinear mix, uh, again, just have two inputs. And we could see now that those are not matching in, in position. First, let me try if uh, the shift is going to work. And there we go, it did, it did work there. And actually that mismatch there was corrected with just one frame. Okay, so now this is the fourth option of my uh, conforms checks options here. I'm just going to go conform, check, mix. I'm going to put 50, so I know it's 50% uh, uh, mix here, which if we see the attributes, we can see there that it's blended at 50%. Okay, and then just save the preset as well. and call it just mix 50. Okay. I can see the chat is uh, moving a lot. Let me see uh, if there are any questions you want me to. Uh, okay. Oh, America, uh, uh, please join. Uh, well, you can follow this on YouTube uh, later. So, um, um, yeah, you can follow this on YouTube, on the SGO channel, and on the ICA channel as well. Okay, so if you really want to come back. Questions over here. Uh, did your fades get split because of the split conform? Is that uh, what they were wonky? No, 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 they did, they did come up like that in the XML. Um, uh, I don't know why. Uh, I think it, it is because of, uh, well, it, it, this uh, actual project, it came from um, Premiere, it went to Resolve, it came into Mystica. So it is, uh, maybe there's many things uh, in the way um, uh, why it's wonky, but it did come up like that. But anyway, I'm showing you how to fix that and how to correct it. And it's a good exercise to learn uh, Mystica and learn how to um, uh, problem solving uh, when these things pop up, because sometimes they pop up and we don't really know the cause uh, when we do these type of conforms. Um, next question, can you load a preset in the visual editor or do you have to be in the timeline? Um, a preset is, uh, actually loaded in the visual editor. So if I uh, come here, 
actually, if I select a preset here, just select it, I can actually say replace and it will replace it. Or I can actually uh, tell Mr. Go to put it on top and it will put it on top in this case. Obviously here it doesn't have two inputs and that's why it is odd like that. But you could ask it uh, to replace it or to put it on, on top of, from the visual editor, which is quite handy, especially when you're doing this. Okay, um, next question. Uh, fixing time warp, bravo. Yeah, that is one way of uh, fixing time warps. One can just hope there will be a universal standard for conforming and time warps. Yeah, yeah, uh, I really hope so. I mean, yeah. Um, can we make a preset for the COM3D for other projects? Oh, uh, never mind. Yes, you can. Actually, the reason why I'm saving these presets in global presets over here, okay? Just be sure that when you set the destination folder, you're sure that you're activating global presets because if not, it will save it in the preset folder of the project, okay? Um, this would be like the, um, like the power, um, the power grades in, in Resolve. Uh, you would have the power grades and you will have your stills. Over here, you would have your presets that are just uh, project dependent and the global presets that are accessible from every single uh, project out there, okay? Um, next question. No, that was uh, America that had, they had to leave. She had to leave, uh, had to leave. And uh, we're going uh, back to our normal flow of the class. So you've seen here that I've done uh, four different types of uh, conform checks here. And what I'm going to do is actually uh, put them here all in one on top of each other here, because what I want to show you is one cool thing that we can do. Actually, I'm going to start just with a conform chip here. Up comes. Remember, I told you that uh, when it doesn't have an input, the wipe uh, node effect is it works as a generator, right? Okay. But we can also build um, uh, dummy effects in Mystica that are going to uh, um, build a stack for us. We could create a stack of effects and then just apply them over the clips, and it will perform all the effect all the effects for us. Um, and we just have to save it as a preset here. And this is exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to go to my effects panel here and press and here dummy, dummy one. And I'm going to press here dummy two. Okay. And if I double click on dummy one, you can see that, well, it's a black and white ramp with a red box in the middle. If I double click on dummy two, it's actually that same black uh, ramp, but with two boxes, okay? What these, these uh, mean, what this uh, one box means and these two boxes mean is that this dummy clip is going to be replacing anything in the stack that is uh, defined as input number one. And this one over here is going to uh, uh, perform any operation that uh, we apply in the effect as input number two. And what we're going to do is actually select this and group it, plus group. And you can see now it has a very odd color. It doesn't have the normal green color of a group. It now has also a range like other effects do, exactly the same as other effects do. And now if I uh, select it here, put it on top of this clip, and drag the, re the range on top of the other clip, you can see it will do exactly the same of, of what was doing before. So when we are dealing with a single node effect, it might be easier to save a preset, but we are going to build a preset of presets. Okay, so actually, I'm going to open this and 
going to get my conform, uh, conform check difference effect here, do exactly the same. I paste it on top so it adjusts automatically to the size. I open the range so it already um, finds two inputs. I clone dummy one and dummy two and put it underneath. I'm going to do the same thing with the picture in picture. Okay, same thing. I'll just copy it. Just paste it on top so it adjusts to the right size. Put it underneath with two spaces for dummy clips one and two. And I'm going to do the same thing with the non-linear mix here. I'm going to copy it. Same thing, adjust to the same size. Bring it down. Copy dummy one and dummy two. And over here, what I'm going to do is select all of them. Actually, let's change the zoom factor so we can see it better. Select all of them and create a group. And it's a dummy group here. And I'm going to call this conform check. And for one second, I'm just going to get rid of all the other conform checks that I have here. Copy this one, select all of them, and paste them. Okay, and now here's the cool part, is that groups in Mystica can have layers, okay? Uh, one thing I have to do first, actually, this is a trick, pay attention. If you lock uh, uh, a node or a clip, a effect clip that has a range, it won't move, but it will let you move the ranges of the clip so actually here we are defining the inputs number one and number two uh, easily there, okay? Now I unlock it. So now we have input two and, and input one defined. And we can see there exactly what we saw before, but we're only seeing um, the white stripe that uh, we chose. But over here we have group layers. And I'm gonna show the record monitor here so you can see it. Once I and my group layers say use next layer, it goes to difference. When I go to use next layer, it goes to the picture in picture. And when I use next layer, it goes to the uh, non-linear mix that I had before. So now in a single group, I have four different presets of my conform uh, check uh, clips, okay, effects. So, Actually, I could change the name of this and say it uh, conform check. I actually thought I did it. Oh, yeah, because I, I moved it before. Okay, conform check. Double click in this case and actually create a new one. And this is conform check all. So now when I come to a shot and I see, okay, this one is okay. Uh, here, this one maybe I can use actually my group layer number four here. And over here I could see, yeah, there is a difference here uh, on, on my um, time warp here. Let's see if I can fix it with uh, shift. Oh, almost there, but let's see time time. Let's go to the first frame and we see that the first frame is already a bit off. I'm going to press alt here and um, auto key and adjust it. There we go. I'm adjusting it there to the beginning. Let's see if it drifts. It doesn't, it looks like it's fine. Let's go to the next shot. This looks like it's okay. 
this one might have the same issue as the previous one. Yeah, it kind of does very slightly. Maybe we could fix this with a shift touch or maybe not. There we go. It looks like it, it did. This one wasn't as, this time up wasn't as aggressive. This one, I'm gonna say it's fine. Oh, this one, it, it's definitely gonna need a little bit more care. So first let's try the shift option and see if that brings it into position. It doesn't look like it does, but over here, I'm gonna activate the auto key and there we go, adjust it to the end. If I wanna choose another one, remember I could go here to group layers and go to layer number four or layer number two. And that would be the difference mode. We can see that over there. It's kind of, it's really off over here. There we go. See, drifts off a bit here. Let's see if uh, just, no, we don't have enough reference there. This one does look like it had a dynamic uh, time warp there. And obviously now in a single group, we have all our different conform check options. Okay. So um, just as this dummy clip thing might be uh, confusing sometimes, uh, did we understand um, how it works? And did we understand the group layers? Great, great. It's great to hear, great to hear. Good, so we will carry on. Oh, great question. Yeah, let's, let's, yeah, that's a, uh, that's a very good question. And actually let's do that. Um, uh, maybe let's do it something a bit more graphically. What is considered a group? Uh, what is considered a layer in a group? Okay, so actually to put in practice the previous, did I choose this one? This, this one isn't the most helpful of all, but let me choose another shot. Sorry guys. Yeah, let's get this one might be better to work with. Okay, so here we have the clip and I'm gonna clone it uh, uh, three times. Okay, press clone, this is going to ask, yep. I select them, pack them to the left and I'm gonna do a different grade on each one of them. Okay, and this one, I'm gonna take it to blue. And the next one, I'm gonna take it to red. Next one, I'm gonna take it to yellow. And next one, I'm gonna take it to green. Okay, just making this like really, really obvious. And then I'm gonna align them to the left here. And in this case, it's not, it's not a dummy clip and it's not going to become an effect, but we could use this as a clip that stores different grades. I can't remember where we got it from. It wasn't here, maybe, maybe it was here. Yeah, it was this one. Okay, so I'm gonna drop this one and hide it. Let's hide this. And maybe you are with the, with your client, and you know you have different grades here, different options here. Okay. And if we navigate inside the group, okay, over here in navigation, we can see we have 
those four different versions of, of that grade. And clearly here, you're showing here the two options to your client if you wanted to. And you go, I'm gonna show him my layer number four. And actually what defines layer number four is uh, just different. And you can see the colors change. In this case, when it's a group, it's not an effect. The colors of the layers change. They go darker. The the lower you go inside inside uh, that group effect. Okay, so um, that is something to show. I'm going to show the record monitor there so we can see the changes. If I use layer one, that's the blue one. Layer two, layer three, layer four. Basically, what it does, it's ignoring. Uh, the previous uh, stacks that are on top of when you choose the latest option over here. Okay, so that's what defines a layer inside a group layer, inside a group, because every group that has a break um, is going to be considered um, a group layer. You could use these, for example, to build your own cache. If you don't want to use the caching system inside Mystica, because the caching system in Mystica is um, defined by the video output. So it's going to render to the resolution of the video output. But maybe you want to do your own cache and you want to kind of um, optimize the media and create a 4K uh, source resolution file to work with but you put it on top of your original media and then you group it. But then maybe the client asks, oh, could you change um, the exposure in the raw media here? Oh, you would just then say, okay, uh, I can do it. It's not gonna be the cache media, but you could go maybe to the raw media and uh, change it uh, for you there. So actually it, it, it provides a flexibility to build your timelines with different things. I wanted to show it to you with, with the conform check tool. So you could create your own preset and uh, actually have a conform check tool inside Mystica, okay? And, uh, but you could use it for many different things. I remember using it, using this option uh, for promos uh, when I was working at Sky Television. What we did was we had uh, different uh, graphics with um, different days and depending if it was Monday at uh, noon or Monday, a Saturday, a Sunday, especially if it was football games, uh, soccer games, uh, it, it would be Saturdays or Sundays and it would, I would just choose the day and, and uh, the time just by using the different layers because uh, the games were always at the same time, and I just had to choose uh, uh, the different day or time for the different games. And I did that with graphics. So you could do, do that as well with, with uh, dummy clips and um, group layers. <coughs> so a blank track in the time space defines where one layer stops and another starts. Correct, yes. And layer refers to, uh, no, it, it, no, it would be to that kind of stack uh, within that group, okay? Can you navigate into the group? Yes, you can navigate into the group. One thing that I didn't show you, actually, yeah, there's a feature request here. It would be cool to change the layer here inside the visual editor. You can't do it. But over here, you can navigate in the group here uh, in the visual editor. But also, uh, you can navigate in here, navigate inside the group. And also, what is interesting is also you can navigate inside uh, Time Warp as well, OK? but you need to be careful because as soon as you change anything here, and you can see here, we're using the whole uh, clip maybe here for this time warp. Mystica might say, um, uh, for example, let's, I'm gonna show it to you with something less critical here. 
just going to copy this again. Oops, I delete that. I convert this into a, a timeline clip, but I navigate in. And then I decide, well, my starting points are different. I really want other starting points and make it make it smaller. When I navigate out, Mr. is going to ask me again if I want to adjust the curve or reset uh, the time warp. Uh, if I reset the time warp, it's going to go back to 100 and then I'll have to build it up again. Um, so those are the different, the different options. When you do this with uh, something that's been conformed, uh, be careful because it will, it will lose the incoming uh, curve sometimes. So that's why uh, I also protect uh, the conform uh, at the bottom, okay? Uh, just in case I mess something up, I could recover uh, how it was originally. Uh, that's why I do it. And as you mentioned, as you mentioned before, uh, we wish there was a standardized way of uh, doing time warps. The time warps are so tricky that I really want to um, save myself uh, some time uh, when doing um, uh, time warps in, in conforms and stuff like that. So what do you guys think if we kind of finish here the conform? I think there's not, mu not many clips we have to go through. Okay, what time is it? Okay, we got 45 minutes and I think we still have a few things to talk about. Let me see. Yeah, let's finish. Uh, I think we are going in a good pace. Let's finish our, our conform here quickly. Uh, one thing that I could have done and I didn't do was, no, this one was the last shot that we worked on. Uh, and now we could learn this. For example, here, if I click on an empty part of the timeline um, and I press K, it would put a marker. And that marker there could define, well, this was the last shot I conformed. And I could also go here to notes and say, uh, create notes and say, um, last checked clip. Press escape and Obviously, I could leave that there for later if I if I come back. Okay, I can see that. Uh, you could also change the color of of the text or anything depending on on what you want. Okay, so I could have put that marker uh, before I I started explaining other things. Um, so over here, oh, we go we come here and we see that this is a classical resize issue, but I guess it's going to be the rotation. And yeah, it's perfectly there. Okay, let's go next shot. This one is a time warp and it looks like it did come up uh, correctly. Uh, there's a few. Oh, Jeff uh, uh, commenting that uh, Sally thinks that uh, Premiere is the de facto standard for time warps. Um, so all the other apps conform to it. <laughs> oh, that's a great comment. Thanks, Jeff. So let's carry on. So we finish here with a, a few things. This looks like it's Correct. Oh, but this is an interesting one. Okay. Mm, no, I think it's fine. Time warp, time warp wise, I think it's fine. But I do feel if we play it in real time, it's a bit bumpy. So this is the shot that we're going to uh, stabilize. And it's especially bumpy because I think it's been accelerated 400%. So it makes complete sense that, uh, it, that it's been bumpy. Okay. So we'll come back to, back to that once this is done. Okay. This one looks like it's fine. 
by the way, I'm jumping from shot to shot, pressing control, uh, right button in my cursors and my uh, keyboard. Okay. Over here, these white shots look have all looked really well. I can see here already cool thing of building this with uh, um, with node effects in Mystica is that um, the snapshots here um, update, so you could actually anticipate the, anything that might be wrong. Again, here uh, I guess this is uh, uh, 180 uh, degree rotation, and in this case, except for the first two clips that we had in our edit. All the other ones, actually, uh, we just had to change the rotation and that was it. Here, oh, this one looks like we have to uh, play with it a little bit more. Let's go to the beginning. Looks like it's fine there. To the end, let's see. If Maybe shift has corrected it and it looks like it has. Yes. Just shifting the clip for one frame has adjusted uh, the time warp there. Okay. Over here, we see that our fade down is correct and our fade up here isn't because I guess, again, that rotation now is correct is spot on. And this one looks like it's a bit off, doesn't it? Here, other key. And that looks better. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, and this would be the last shot. So, oh, yeah, and it kind of goes away there for a second. And sadly, we can't see there. Let's hope just by shifting that clip for one frame, it gets adjusted and it looks like it does. And there we go. So we've conformed our timeline and now, well, we could we could save this here and just uh, leave it there if we wanted to, and maybe just have it there just in case if we need to use it as a reference. Sometimes the client is going to say, oh, but how was it in the edit? And uh, you really want to keep it there. Uh, but then it might uh, interfere with any other grading stack that you do. So you could actually also move it on top if you want to, and then drag it uh, if you need anything else. Now that's not the last one that we have. So I'm going to come here to notes and say delete all notes. Okay, let's see, record monitor. Sorry, I'm so used to having a, um, a monitor outside that I forget to get the record monitor uh, shown here. Okay, so over here we had this shot that was accelerated 400%. Uh, what I'm gonna show you here right now is the start and end play markers, okay? Uh, if you select a clip and press W, it will put uh, the play markers there. And here with the play markers, what you have is you have three options of play, um, and it will just do a single play of the clip and stop. Uh, when it gets to the end, okay. Um, you could also um, kind of swing. So once it gets to the back, then it will reverse or just loop, okay, if we wanted to. I think that if we see this, we could see that um, the shot is, is, is moving a bit. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is 
apply a COMP3D effect. Can I go here, COMP3D? And in this case, in the COMP3D, we only going to have one layer. So when I go here to background, um, it's going to be solid. You can say if it's going to be input one or if it's going to be a solid. And in this case, it's going to be input one. And to stabilize this shot, well, it's, I'm not going to stabilize it. I'm just going to smooth it a bit. We're going to use the tracker and do a single point tracker. So I'm double clicking here just to view this without uh, the comfort de interfering with anything. I'm going to go to my tracking module. And there's already a tracker in, tracker zero. I'm going to choose this point here. Okay, I select it. And in this case, um, in the middle, I'm just gonna press press both, oh, I mean, go both ways. And there we go, it's following that point. Okay, that looks good. And now I'm gonna double click on the COM3D. And in the comp 3 d I'm going to select my layer uh, uh, number one here. And obviously here we will have the option of seeing transform attributes. Um, and in this case, we're not interested in uh, the form or, or crop and actually just the transform options. So I've only needed one point. I bet there's other shots, maybe some of the the table shots might need also uh, some stabilization. Uh, I will let you guys play with that and maybe tell me in the next week uh, if you found anything tricky or anything that needed two tracking points. But basically, if uh, you have the, tra the tracker information there, um, and you have, obviously you're in the uh, tracking window, you have the possibility of uh, choosing how you want to apply this. If you want to move, if I press move, now it's going to move the whole uh, clip just as, as it was tracked, okay? That's not what we want. If we hit stabilize, okay? And this is important, okay? I'm going to actually use stabilize rather than smooth now to show you actually this is, and something I think that is, it's better than in other, in other systems. You choose where uh, the anchor point is in uh, the keyframe graph, okay? In, in, in the keyframes here. If I choose that um, my first frame is going to remain untouched, I'm gonna press stabilize here. And obviously the position there of my first frame is the one that's going to be um, defining how this clip is being stabilized. If I decide that it's going to be the end, I'm going to press stabilize here, and you can see here that it, it goes zero, zero. But if we go to our first frame here, we can see that now it's uh, minus 56 and minus 10. And when we applied it there, it was zero because that we defined that uh, how we want to do the stabilization in this case, the, the frame that we want to anchor this from is the last frame of, of uh, the clip. Um, in this case, uh, I don't think it really matters for this. Uh, no, maybe, maybe it does because the next shot is exactly the same. And maybe let's, let's do that. I'm going to smooth the movement from the last frame here, okay? So there we see that this last frame is unaltered. And then we could see obviously all the animation going to the end. And one cool thing here is if I go to background and go to my color swatch here, I'm gonna say uh, here, my background color just show me red and that can show me if I'm showing any, any, uh, yeah, any background there. But I'm gonna go to the next shot and actually, uh, 
smooth that one as well. So apply another COM3D here and actually uh, track that same point. I'm gonna delete this tracker and insert a new one. If you press insert a new keyboard, you'll have a new one, okay. Um, if you press add tracker here, it will add another one here. And say, go forward. Oh, there we go. Just if we want to offset this now, maybe we could offset it there. Let me double check. Hmm. Let's hope it, it, it stays there. So obviously here I could go to that. That's when we lose it. With offset, you have to press Alt and you'll be able to offset um, uh, the tracker. Okay. And then go forward again. Oh, just at the very end, we lost it. Hmm. Okay, so maybe here we just offset one second here. And if you just want to go one frame, you go just next frame. Sorry, guys. So from here that we lose it a bit. There we go. Now nah, it jumps. Okay, let me go back here. Let's see if there's something else I can track. It's a bit too far off there, but well, sorry, this wasn't successful. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Let's go back. So you can see here, not everything is rehearsed over here. <laughs> okay, so I've got this point here. I'm just gonna track it manually from here and to where I lose it. Okay, so uh, to show basically this, what I wanted to do is I'm in the COM3D. Now in the tracker, I'm gonna position the tracker where it should be. And it's going to shake a little bit at uh, the end there, okay? But if I go here to layer one and go to my first frame and choose smooth, And over here, again, I'm also going to add the background there. So when we see it, we know when we're out there. If you can see, in this previous COMP3D, I have another axis, axis number two here. And over here, I do need to uh, zoom in a bit more. So over here, it does jump in a lot. So let's say I go 110% here, 
and 110% here, size Y in another axis, okay? And there we could see that now we are safe there. I do exactly the same thing on the other one. Go to axis number two and choose 110. 110 may, might not be exactly necessary here, but then if I choose Yeah, record monitor, let's view it. Let's make this smaller here so we don't view the whole edit. Okay, in our play markers, go to the start, double click. And it should smoothly, we could see that there's no jump between the two shots because we chose to define the first frame of one clip uh, to be the anchor of one uh, uh, stab, uh, stabilization and uh, choose uh, the other one. The other thing that we could have done, actually, but I haven't checked, is maybe group these two and stabilize the whole thing. That's something else that we could have done. Um, and then the other thing here as well, if we want to keep this tidy, maybe we do want to group this into a single clip. It's the same shot and it's going to have the same grade, so it might be interesting to to have it like this. Okay, so any questions about this? Sorry, that took a little bit longer than I thought. The logo to the tracked point, you would choose move. You would choose move, but maybe that's an exercise that we could maybe do um, uh, later on or, or maybe next week because now actually, what I'm going to do is uh, show quickly how we're going to import uh, graphics, okay? So let's do that here for a second. Okay, so one thing I'm gonna do here now is I'm gonna lock these two shots. You can lock clips, uh, you can lock, um, tracks here in Mystica. As you can see here now, those tracks are now locked. And we're going to conform an EDL now. And in this EDL, okay, if I go to my Mystic Essentials documentation EDL, and this is just an EDL that's going to have uh, the graphics. I'm gonna go, in this case, I do want to search the media after import, next. And in this case, the path is ICA Mystic Essentials, GFX, and press perform. Your new confirmed shots will overlap with something that is existing. Oh yeah, it just went to the bottom there. Okay, anyway, um, that is the sound there. Let me just get rid of that. That's annoying. This was the sound that actually was split conformed. Unfortunately, let me tidy this up in a second. And this was the, the, okay. Now I have the graphics here and we can see these graphics. We saw them the first day, uh, that is the title and we can only see it in the alpha channel here. 
One thing I don't like of this is uh, obviously it comes from the EDL and in the EDL, it does say that you need to freeze the frame and then you need to apply a fade in, fade out. In this case, for example, the fade in and the fade out has been uh, uh, correctly translated. So what I'm gonna do here is actually um, clone this for a second and ungroup it. And then I have uh, the single uh, frame. And what I'm gonna do here is uh, select this and get duration, select my uh, graphic and say set duration. And now I have the frozen frame there and I don't need these time warps that actually uh, aren't really uh, uh, useful. It's much better to work with, a, with a, a frozen frame here. And it's gonna be the same case with this one here. I'm gonna ungroup it, uh, get duration, uh, set duration get rid of the time warps there, just put that on the bottom and then we'll deal with how we comp them. Uh, this is going to be exactly the same. Whoops, I accidentally double clicked. Open this, get duration and set duration. Okay, get rid of these. And here at the bottom, at the very end of our edit, same thing, I'll clone this, ungroup it, get duration and set duration. And now I'm dealing with a frozen frame. I don't need to deal with any time warps or any uh, tricky clips or anything. Let's go at the beginning. Let's go at the first uh, title effect here. I'm going to remove the uh, two blocked uh, tracks there. So right now, I'm not gonna care too much about uh, the fades right now. I'm gonna leave them there. If I add a COM3D here right now, and use that as layer one here, my COM3D is showing, actually it's not showing uh, the graphic titles here. It's only at the very end when it fades uh, fades out. Um, that's not the order that I want, actually. And if I if I uh, show this in my node graph, we can see that um, we can see the fade up there as well. Uh, my input number one is the graphic, and input number two is uh, the edit. I actually um, would want this to be the other way around. So. What I need to do there is actually invert the order here. So put it on the bottom. And then now with the COM3D, now it does apply the text, okay? But maybe this is not exactly what I wanted. Uh, let's see. Um, now I am going to put the fades in and fades out and see what happens. Okay, what are we dealing with here? Let's see. Um, is this something uh, we can work with? Oh, obviously it's fading from black so it kind of goes uh, gray. So that's not exactly what we want as, as, uh, uh, as a text. Maybe what could be easier instead of having this kind of solid white that we only have the alpha channel, and this is a good exercise as, as well to kind of see, okay, they didn't send us the graphics as we wanted to. It's actually we could play with um, the alpha channel. And one of the options that we have is come here to show alpha and click show uh, uh, to the our alpha effects and go show alpha. And now we are actually exporting the alpha channel here um, to the RGB channels. So now that's exactly what uh, we would want, right? So that might be um, uh, helpful as well. So let's see how that looks now. So. Now I have my show alpha as input number two, but oh, what happens? Oh, we now it's the alpha channel is completely solid. Okay, so what can we do? Well, why don't we go to RGB here and say, well, let's multiply this by alpha one, multiply this by alpha one, and multiply this 
by alpha one. And here, instead of one here, we actually want X only now. So now we can see that the alpha channel here is this one and the black uh, and the RGB is that one there. So now when I come through the, now we do see that, okay? And actually now we could have the blends, but uh, what if we don't want to use um, uh, the blends there, the effects? We could actually get rid of them. Let's see the duration of uh, these. It's just 12 frames, okay? And I guess get duration here, 12 frames as well. We could do this with a uh, Comp3D. And actually I'm going to put the fade on top of a Comp3D here, so. It's not following us at all. So I come here to layer number one and in attributes blend, I alt a key and say, okay, yeah, this is going to be a hundred. 12 frames later, uh, no, sorry, it's going to be zero. <laughs> yeah, sorry, got confused there. 12, 100 and then same thing about the other way around. Here, it's going to be 100 and then 83. So from 100 to, to zero there. And actually, that's what we see. But obviously here we're seeing, um, sorry, my bad here. In the background, I want to say input one. And now the text is fading in and fading out. But let's have a closer look uh, to the text here. And we can see there it's like very, oh, it's gritty and uh, well, it, it's not, it's not really nice, is it? Um, there's several things that we could do with that. Obviously, in the options here of our of our COM3D, we could choose to do samples. This will uh, multiply um, the edges of of uh, of the alpha channel there to make them smoother. But in this case, I actually think the original uh, image is is of, uh, too much of the high, really high high resolution. So that's why we have it like this. But maybe what we could do here is actually go to our timeline, select the channels effect and apply here a blur over here. And, and in the blur, okay, what I'm seeing here, we could, uh, if we go to units and we are in an HD project, I can type in 1920, okay? And in 1920 here, then I choose the radius and in the radius, I'm gonna say, I wanna, kind of blur this with a Gaussian blur of maybe two pixels. And there we go, that is two pixels. But what's going on? Oh, there's a little bit of an edge coming up there. Why is that? Well, it's because we're doing the uh, blur only in RGB. We can do it in RGB and alpha, okay? And there we, we would have it. And then obviously in the COM3D, we also have the option of multiplying. And then now that looks slightly better. Okay, maybe it's gone way too soft. Let's drag it there, one. And I think that that is better. Now here, this little eye that we have in our evil tree is our bypass and we can bypass that effect here. Okay, and that is something that we could definitely do over here. Okay, so that's something that we could do here. And in the timeline, we could also do it if we see it in the record monitor. Here, you select the clip and you press D and you will deactivate it, of course. Okay, so we have this stack and maybe, well, we could do something similar with, with this other one. Let me see time uh, with 10 minutes to go. I think you got the idea of what we could do with a COM3D, uh, but 
let's quickly do something similar here, okay? In this case, with the channels effect, what I'm going to do is actually multiply this with the alpha channel. Okay, that's exactly how it comes uh, in the alpha channel. And apply uh, config with alt three, uh, alt three. Okay, let's do some top there for a second. And here in layer one, we have uh, two options, obviously. We would have had the option of transforming uh, the uh, alpha, the graphic here, putting 50, and 50 and the attributes of the clip, okay? And offsetting this, uh, whoa, sorry. Offsetting this to one side, okay? And maybe down to the bottom. We could have done that in the attributes panel, of course. Maybe 35. Too small, okay. We do it there, or we could we could do this obviously in the comfortability effect. Okay, so in the comfortability effect, we could actually, uh, if I choose background input one, and I choose layer here with control, I can make it smaller. Alt, remember we saw this the other day. Alt will always rotate inside of Mystica. Okay. And uh, shift will change uh, the position. So you, that might be easier to do with the COM3D um, effect. Things that we could also do here and, and might make more sense in this shot than in the previous one is we could add shadow. And uh, let's just be aggressive here by adding the intensity here to 100 and here uh, obviously, we could also uh, choose a blur if we want to, and then kind of blur it if we consider this uh, necessary. And again, as we did before, maybe uh, the alpha channel here is too strong in this case, way too strong. We can add, uh, again, another blur effect, but this time maybe say, oh, I just want to work in the alpha channel. And in the alpha channel, say, okay, Let's just apply uh, one pixel blur here in the alpha channel. Let's see how it looks in the comp 3D there. Okay, we will need to multiply it now on top here in blended mode. And oops, we lose a little bit samples i'll put it there in 15 and then we see now it's much smoother okay so now you have different things uh, to work with here but what have we learned today we've learned today that there is these things that are called dummy clips and it's a very cool way of tidying up our timeline as well we use the dummy clips to create um uh our conform check tools but we could also do them to kind of sort out our timeline and, and make it tidier. So in this case, between the Gaussian alpha uh, blur that I'm doing here and the COM3D, I'm going to effects and apply a dummy clip one. Okay, and there we go. We could see our graphic is being replayed, applied on top of uh, that, uh, graph that uh, element that we saw before of a black and white ramp with a red box. And now I group it. And now this is something that I can easily apply on top of my clip. And it's not really bothering me as much. In my timeline when I'm working if I have to. And here, obviously, we still need to uh, maybe apply the grades from the other day and uh, whatever. Okay, so that is something that we could do here. Okay, so for the final uh, 10 minutes,
do you want me to explain the denoise tools or do you want me to explain uh, some of this again? Let me know. Denoise, okay. Uh, I was confused that you tracked the shot with the shot itself selected in the evil tree. Yes, that is that is actually something tricky uh, to think about in Mystica. You could choose, and and in some moments it's it's really cool and really uh, helpful. Um, for example, you've done a heavy grade, and they ask you to to um, um, track something. You could go down to the source, and you could go down to 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 the clip. Uh, and that tracking information uh, doesn't rem uh, doesn't remain in the shot. Uh, it's kind of let's say it's like a plugin you activate. So actually, the last information you tracked will be available there, even though you are in a different shot or, or in a different part of the timeline. It is something tricky that uh, people, uh, once they work with Mystica, they have to get uh, used to. Yes. Okay. Denoise. So here quickly, I'm going to order this shot, the, this comp as well, by doing exactly the same thing. Effects, dummy one, and grouping it, okay? But I'm gonna leave it underneath here for a second. So denoise, let's go with the Mystica denoise, and actually with the graphics here as well, let's leave that uh, behind. It does kind of go to a copy buffer, yeah. But you, when you go to the tracker, you have the option of selecting any tracker that you have there uh, uh, to do the tracking. As well as in the timeline, if I press H, I would hide that tracker. And that won't be taken into account when you apply the tracker information, OK? So if you have several trackers and one of them is kind of uh, uh, a bit rogue and it's, it's not tracking like the one I did before, you could press H, hide it, and it wouldn't apply a tracking information. Or you could just select it and delete it as well. OK, so a good shot to see uh, our denoise effect. I think the top shot is actually quite good. Uh, to work on it, but um, might have let's do it here. Okay, so. Um, go to denoise uh, this shot. We're going to use uh, the Mystica uh, effect. I'm going to get rid of the storyboard. We don't need it right now. Turn off the order key option. And first, I'm going to use the um, Mystica denoise. And in the Mystica uh, denoise tool, here, just click over here. Um, we have obviously our menu here where we have uh, uh, the number of frames that we're going to take into account because this is a time-based uh, denoise, the mode, and how much of spatial uh, denoise we're going to apply. And the case here is uh, we can analyze uh, how the denoise is working. And uh, the way of doing it uh, here, for example, would be, and this might be a tricky shot, maybe not as noisy. Uh, let me see if there's another a better shot here, sorry. Let's actually see it with a wide shot better. Sorry for changing idea, guys. I really want to show it in something slightly better with a bit more information. Okay, so 
I've got the denoise effect here. And in the alpha channel, Mr. Gut is showing you how that motion estimation uh, and where those areas that are prone of having artifacts um, uh, are, where those are. Okay, so if I go here, for example, to temporal here for a second, and let's go for five frames, and you can see suddenly it jumps and it shows uh, a, a much wider region of the shot. And this wider region of the shot is actually uh, all those uh, uh, parts of the image that are prone of having artifacts. And if I go to RGB, we're actually going to see those artifacts here. Okay, because right now I'm just in temporal mode and we can see those. See, you can see them, how, how it bounces and how everything kind of breaks up. We're going to narrow that down a little bit. So uh, we then combine a temporal and a spatial denoise at the same time. We're going to go to alpha mode. Over here, I'm going to put uh, the scale to 20. And the scale to 20, uh, normally with the end gamma, we want to neutralize the gamma and maybe go to kind of a, a kind of as gray as possible here, but I think with what we have, 1.0, uh, it should be enough. 1.1 might be slightly better. If the developers say th uh, see this, they might tell me, no, you have to go 1.2, but uh, honestly, um, I think with one or 1.1 should be enough. And um, this will actually show us uh, as much as we can narrow down. And we bring the scale back up again for one reason, and is that obviously here with a level, we really want to discriminate that as much as possible. Okay. We, we choose here if we want to reduce that, those kind of um, um, nowhere land areas there or kind of in the middle and then reduce the scale as much as possible. So now, if I show the RGB image, we can see we still have those artifacts there, but when I use it combined, they kind of disappear. And normally what I do in spatial is instead of 0 0.50, I put 0 0.30. And I don't know, I kind of feel that that uh, slightly works slightly better. And that's how I, denoise stuff in Mystica with the, with the uh, uh, Mystica denoiser tool. And the denoiser tool, it's actually something that is very um, uh, performance heavy. So if I copy this right now, select all the clips here and paste them, would be really difficult. Uh, generally, to, to kind of uh, improve uh, every, sh uh, to get the best of every shot, we would need to tailor uh, the denoise uh, parameters for every shot. But in the case here for, for this, um, I think this should, be, this should be enough. You can see that it's struggling to play real time. It's going to 15 frames per second. So maybe this is something that we really want to uh, cache if we want to. So to cache something in Mystica, you can actually choose the, the level or the effect you want to uh, cache this on. And in this case, it would be um, from the denoise effect. And you go here to playback cache and you say, select cache on. And then you get this kind of uh, red C on top, okay? And that red C on top means that the cache hasn't been done yet. So only when you go to play cache and say, uh, render current in foreground, in this case, it will render the current shot time in, in the foreground and um, it, will, it will do this. Um, I'll do the render and in a second here, we will see it turn from red to green.
there we go. It's gone to green now, and now you should be able to uh, play this, okay, in real time, and even work on it if you wanted to, okay. Um, that's only because I hit on render current, but if you go to playback cache and say render uh, pending in foreground, it will rend all of them in foreground, okay. And there you go, it's currently rendering. I'm gonna press cancel. One thing that you can do is actually extract. Yes, I wanna cancel this process. And see when, when the render hasn't worked or, it, or it's crashed, see we get that um, uh, checkerboard, okay? That Mystic is telling you that something has gone wrong. Um, we will have to invalidate it. But another thing that you can do here in playback cache is, um, select the uh, extract and it will extract the render that we just did okay uh, in the in the uh, error message that the mystica shows when you do this let's read it carefully the extracted clips are not independent from the cache system their media can be easily overwritten by following uh, cache updates so we need to be very careful but at least you can double check that your media has been rendered properly, just like it was another another clip. Okay, as I said before, the cache system in Mystica is dependent on the uh, video output, so it will only render to the resolution of the video output. If you want to uh, do a more a kind of um, a specific cache for uh, your project, if you're working in a 4K project and your video output is HD, um, you might want to use the output uh, uh, panel here and render this as by time code that it will run, it will split to segments every single shot here and render all these clips. And actually, if I chose here, yeah, I think if I put here cache, it will go to the same. I'm going to hide all the clips that are at the bottom over here. If I do this and say ICA day three, source clip tape name, clip TC, okay, remove my start and end markers, but my in and out markers are here. Um, and just press foreground. This will now render all those clips. I'm gonna cancel this for a second. Uh, first, uh, I didn't, I forgot to explain that. Uh, if you click select and validate uh, or cache off, you can remove those um, cached clips that went wrong, okay. And over here, just to kind of quickly replicate what would happen, although I'm not gonna render, I'm just gonna press write script only. Yeah, I'm gonna overwrite the clips. Here, Mystica will render all these clips individually. I put them on top because we have elements on top here. It's taken a while. Okay. So, sorry guys, this is going really slow right now. So, let's 
think that, okay, this is what we would have done and it would have been applied here. And generally, if you want to use this as, a, as your own cache here, what I would do is in edit here in this macro, I could go and say group segments and it will just uh, collapse into a single group, all those elements that we've selected and put them into uh, single groups. Okay, as these are not really rendered clips, I don't really want to work with these right now. Okay. Uh, but let's imagine. Um, okay, we've confirmed this. You guys have been working with your grades for the last week uh, or week and you're saying, oh God, and now how am I going to bring these grades uh, the grades that I've done last week to this new timeline. Well, I'm going to do it the other way around. I'm going to select this, copy, hit my home button and open timeline 01. Do I want to save this? Yes, I do want to save this. And in this timeline, just paste the new conformed clips. Align them to the left, get rid of the old ones and just put them underneath. So in case you've already done grades and you don't want to feel like, oh, do I have to do this again? That's a way of bringing in a whole conform that you've done in, in the past. And there you go. Now it has the grades that we worked on uh, last week. Okay. So that is uh, for you to uh kind of feel that um obviously we didn't lose any job uh but while doing this we could still uh use some of the grades that we worked on last week to these new conform tools because it's actually it's actually the same thing i just gave you a scene detected uh, sequence of of the same edit so how how did it go this uh and um, I think the, the moment I explained the cache system, it, it, it got a bit confusing. Maybe we can repeat that uh, next week. How do you guys feel? How did it go? Yeah, thank you. We learned a lot. Right. Uh, Je uh, Jeff has a question here. So what's the game with uh, the noising and looking at the alpha channel in Temple? Get rid of gray and make everything either black or white. Try to, yeah, try to uh, define as um, try to kind of reduce the gray areas as much as possible, okay? Because if there is a gray area uh, and Mystica, it, and it's shown like it could potentially have an artifact, it will have an artifact. So you really want to discriminate that as much as possible. So um, um, uh, when you comp it back, uh, when it comps back the spatial, it gets rid of all the artifacts that uh, um, it are shown. Any other question you might have of today's session? I'm, I'm glad you liked it, guys. I really wanted to, I really want to pack with content these four days. That, that's what I really wanted. And I really want you guys to go with the feeling that, um, man, anything they throw at you in Mystica is, is something that you can accomplish. And, and also try to work smart in Mystica. Mystica is, is it, 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 it is a powerful tool. Um, but, um, but yeah, it's also tricky. Great. So I'm going to leave it uh, at here. Uh, thank you all for attending.